Hello everyone and welcome to my review and demonstration of the Miele Blizzard CX-1 Comfort Powerline Vacuum Cleaner. During the course of this video I'm going to demonstrate the machine on carpets and hard floors, I'm going to see how easy it is to empty and maintain, and I'll point out the various features and benefits of this vacuum. But before I start the video I'm just going to show you everything that comes with this particular model. First up we have the Miele Ecotech Plus carpet and hard floor nozzle with a foot operated pedal to lower the brush when you're cleaning hard floors. And when you're cleaning carpets it's got these litter pickers either side of the suction inlet that are designed to help pick up more difficult items such as pet hair. The next main floor nozzle you get with this particular model is the Miele Parquet Twister XL. Now you can see that this is a very wide head so it's ideal for larger areas of hard flooring. It has more softer, delicate brushes which are ideal for cleaning parquet and other wooden flooring. The other main floor head is this new Miele SRD head. This is specifically designed to clean floors that have got cracks such as exposed floorboards. The design of it is such that it should remove dust and debris from inside the grooves of the floorboards better than a conventional nozzle. The small nozzles include this soft dusting brush, a crevice tool and a small upholstery nozzle. The crevice tool and the upholstery nozzle do store on board the machine but you do have to find somewhere else to put the dusting brush because there is no onboard storage. The metal telescopic extension tube fits securely into Miele's Comfort hand grip. This hand grip also incorporates remote control so you can switch the machine on and off and vary the suction without returning to the cleaner. This Miele Blizzard has all the features you'd expect of a modern vacuum cleaner, including comfort cord rewind, a parking bracket on the side in case you need to pause your cleaning, and also a storage bracket on the rear of the machine and a built-in carry handle. At the back of the cleaner you'll find why this Miele is different from all other Mielers that have gone before. Yes, this is a bagless Miele vacuum cleaner, in fact it's Miele's first bagless machine. So this is the clear bagless unit, you simply remove it from the cleaner by pulling up on this handle and then it removes from the machine. Before I show you the actual bagless container, I'll just show you the filter in a bit more detail. This will need cleaning from time to time to maintain efficiency. Of course we have Miele's Comfort Clean system which you can press this button here and the machine will automatically clean the filter. The cleaner will also sense when it needs to clean the filter itself so if it finds that the filter is getting too blocked up the cleaner will switch itself off and perform the Comfort Clean feature. So inside here is a pleated filter. Now to avoid exposure to dust when you're cleaning this Miele suggests you run the tap through this section here give the filter a shake and then you can dismantle it for a more thorough clean. So to take the filter apart you just simply remove the top and then you can run this pleated filter under running water to give it a thorough clean. Obviously to maintain the clean you can use the comfort clean button but you do need to give it a more thorough clean from time to time. You need to ensure this dries for at least 24 hours before replacing it in the cleaner. So once it's clean you simply pop it back you can also of course rinse out this part, pop it back, line up the arrow with the unlocked padlock and then close it to the locked padlock and then it just goes back in the machine like that until it locks in position. So this is the bagless container, there's a maximum fill line here so it's best not to go over this line. It's quite a large capacity so you might not have to empty it after each cleaning but certainly keep your eye on this max line and don't let the dirt go above it. Now everything on this container will dismantle for a more thorough clean. You don't have to do this every time. In fact most of the time all you have to do is empty it. So you just press that little orange lever there and the dirt will fall out at the bottom of the bin. But you can take everything apart for a more thorough clean. So you can remove this part of the cyclone and you can rinse that under running water. Make sure it's 100% dry before returning to the cleaner. There's also another little mesh filter just located inside here. It's a little bit tricky to pull out. There we go, it's a bit easier now. That can be cleaned under run running water as well and you can actually clean the whole unit under running water. Miele suggests you don't use washing up liquid for some reason but in any case make sure it's 100% dry before returning it to the machine. So this sort of cleaning only has to be done periodically, maybe once every four months or so. 
just to maintain the efficiency of the vacuum. Everything goes together really easily. Just make sure it clicks into place like that and then you can return it to the machine and carry on with your cleaning. Okay, I'm in my kitchen now to test the Miele Blizzard on a hard floor and I've put down some rice, rolled oats and flour and I've made sure it's gone right up to the edge of the kitchen units so we can see how effective this machine is at cleaning close to the edge. So I'm going to use it on its maximum setting, its maximum suggested setting for floors and I'm using the Ecotech Plus head on its hard floor setting. As you can see, initially it seemed to do a very good job until I brought the nozzle back and it's brought especially the rolled oats with it. It also, I don't know if we can quite see, possibly you just about can see, it's snow ploughed. This is a common fault with a lot of nozzles. It's snow ploughed the rolled oats to the edge of the cabinet there. So I'll just do it again. As you can see, this particular nozzle, it doesn't seem to want to pick up all these rolled oats in one go. Now where it's snow ploughed, I should be able to remove those if I just angle the nozzle slightly. So now you can see it has picked up everything and it's picked more or less, apart from one tiny particle I can see, it's more or less cleaned everything up to the edge. So I've attached the Parquet Twister XL nozzle. Let's see if it makes a better job of cleaning hard floors than the Ecotech head. Again, I'm going to use full power for this. Slightly better. It, it, has of course left some of the rolled oats, so I'll need to have to go over it again. It's also, I'm afraid, snow ploughed right up to the edge, even despite the fact that the brush has actually got little gaps in it. There, look. So, but some of the particles obviously aren't getting through. Not first time anyway, let's uh, go over it again. So everything has been picked up, it took a few passes, but it will eventually remove everything. So not a lot to choose really between the performance of the Parquet Twister and the regular head. The Parquet Twister is much wider though, so if you've got a larger area to clean, perhaps the Parquet Twister will be the best nozzle for you to use. Well I'm back in my living room and I've put down a load of dirt on this short pile carpet so I'm going to test the Miele Blizzard on dust pickup from carpets. Apart from dust there's an awful lot of other debris in here. There's rice and oats from other demonstrations. There's bits of paper, carpet fibres and the odd dog hair. So I'm just going to pass the nozzle forward and back through the middle and I'm going to use the suggested setting which is a setting just below maximum. Now, I detected, could be me, but I detected a bit of a drop in airflow. Now, I'm not sure if this machine is able really to cope with a large amount of dirt in one go. When I've been using this cleaner around the house normally without putting down extra dirt, 
I've been very impressed with its suction performance, which it did maintain. But because I'm picking up a lot of debris at the same time, I think the filter system and the cyclone system is having trouble coping. Let's have a look actually at the bin. Yes, this is what's happened, and I've seen this in other demonstrations. And it seems to be this part. Now this is the, the main little shroud. Now that's what's got clogged up pretty quickly. As I say, during normal use, I've not found that an issue. I cleaned my mum's house, which is much larger than mine, from top to bottom with this machine last week, and it did a very good job. And this part did not get any hair wrapped around it. She's got several dogs, but there was no hair wrapped around it. But I was just cleaning what looked like clean carpets, but I did get quite a lot of dirt out of them. Well, I'm going to attempt to clean up the rest of this, but as I say, it might struggle with it. But then this is an extreme example. It seems to be maintaining the suction on the rest of the dirt, but I'm not sure if you can pick it up. But the hairs and the carpet fibres are still struggling to be picked up, and I found that with this particular cleaner. So it will eventually pick the hair up, but there's a lot of toing and froing before the hair is actually sucked into the machine. So, as I said, get the optional head. It costs about 40 to 50 pounds though, but if you don't want the remote handle, I suggest you go for the cat and dog version. Well, that's about the end of my review and demonstration of the Miele Blizzard CX-1 vacuum cleaner. What do I think of it? Well, I think it's a very good attempt by Miele at making a bagless vacuum cleaner. But unlike Dyson, they haven't perfected the cyclone technology. This machine, as you saw, got clogged up quite quickly when I tested it on an extreme example. Having said that, during normal use, when I've used it around my house without putting down lots of extra dirt, I've been more than happy with the performance of this vacuum cleaner, apart from pet hair. As I said, if you've got pets, either buy the cat and dog version or get the optional Miele Turbo Head. What I will say, it is rather bulky and heavy compared to a bagged mealer. If you're used to using a bagged mealer, you might find it a bit of a shock with this machine. It does move quite easily over the carpet and floor thanks to its four wheels, but I do find it's quite bulky. On stairs, it will stand on a stair, but I would hold it. It's not that secure. It's quite wide at this end, so it does hang over the edge of a stair. All in all, though, it's a very refined, quiet, convenient vacuum. I like the features that Dyson don't have, such as the remote control on, off, and suction uh, control on it. It's got the Comfort Clean, which is good, but not perfect, as you saw, but it's better than not having it, as long as you remember to press it from time to time. If you don't, of course, the machine will do it for you if it senses restricted airflow. All in all, it's Miele's first bagless cleaner. It needs improvement, but it's a thumbs up from me. Um, I suggest, as I said, get the cat and dog version if you've got pets, or if you don't want the refinement of the remote handle, there is a lower version than this that has the same Ecotec floor head, but it has a rotary dial on the machine itself, which is slightly cheaper than this top of the line model. If you have any questions about this machine, please ask in the comments section below. And as I said, I'll probably be doing an update video of this machine in due course. Thank you to AO.com who supplied this machine free of charge in exchange for this video review and a written review on their website. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.